Alright, welcome back to Fishing Fables. Today I want to share with you what you need to bring and how to prep for your inflatable bow fishing. There are many items you'll need and it's very easy to forget a few things here and there. So hopefully this will help you create a list of items you'll need. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. So the very first thing I do is to inflate my boat a day or two before uh, the fishing day. Just to make sure no air is leaking. Sometimes air can leak very slowly and it's not really noticeable. So always good to leave it inflated overnight. The second thing on my list is the outboard motor. Apart from your yearly maintenance service, uh, it's very important to check a few things and run your motor periodically. First I normally check for engine oil, making sure it's at the right level. And then I'll run my motor with fresh water, preferably right after your trip, to clean out the salt water or other contaminants in the cooling system. And then I like to run it until the gasoline basically runs out from the carburetor as well. Third on my list is using fresh gasoline. It's always important to use high quality gasoline to keep your motor healthy and to prolong its life. I would normally use gasoline that's within about a month old. The next item on my list is the gasoline pump. Uh, my motor only uses the internal tank, so the pump is very needed when I'm out in the water. But if you have the fuel injected motor with the gasoline tank, then uh, you won't have my problem. The next item on my list is a trolling motor. Apart from using it for fishing, I actually use it more as a backup motor in case my outboard motor fails. I've had my motor fail before for different reasons and it never hurts to have a backup motor to bring you back home safe. The next items uh, may sound pretty obvious but the trolling motors, battery and the kill switch. Uh, I've forgotten many times to either charge up the battery the night before or leave my kill switch at home to start the motor. So always have those items on your checklist. Next items are electric air pump and lithium battery. Uh, if you use a boat trailer or take your boat inflated before, perhaps you won't need it. But I always take my folded boat in my car and inflate right before getting in the water. So if you're like me, uh, always make sure to bring your electric air pump and the lithium battery and you can also use your car battery as well. The next item on my list is the manual hand air pump. Uh, in case you need to pump extra air or just to have it in your boat in case of emergency when you're on the water. Next items are fish finder and transducer. Obviously, uh, fish finder and transducers are optional, but it gives you a ton of information to make your trip way better, like the depth of water or underwater structures, and of course, where the fish are located, and potentially the types of fish as well. Next, fish finder and transducer battery. Similar to the trolling motor, uh, you will need a battery to charge up your fish finder and transducer. Uh, I use Nakwa Pro battery, uh, which I highly recommend. It's water resistant, uh, it's very small and light, and lasts very long. I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested. Uh, next items for me uh, are the having a comfortable seat on my boat. Unfortunately, inflatable boats only come with aluminum benches and they aren't the most comfortable seats for fishing. If you're fishing for a long period of time, I would recommend getting uh, comfortable seats installed. For my boat, I've actually built my own swivel seats uh, on top of the benches and they've been working nicely so far. I have a separate video on how I built them if you'd like to check it out. Next, uh, buoys for the boat. I would recommend getting a couple of buoys to protect your boat when it's docked or you know prevent from hitting rocks on shallow water. Next, uh, you will need ropes. 
Make sure to bring plenty of ropes when you're taking your inflatable boat out. You will need ropes to dock your boat when getting ready. Uh, you can also use it to anchor your boat or uh, pull up crab traps. Uh, and always good to have extra in case of emergency. Next, live bait aerator. Uh, if you like to use live bait for fishing, it's great to have an aerator in a basket to keep your bait alive. Uh, next items are ice cooler for frozen bait and rod holders. Um, for me, to save more space and time, uh, I'm using the top of the ice cooler to cut up the frozen baits. And since I've attached my rod holders uh, on each side of the cooler, I can hook up these cut up baits quickly onto the rigs. Next items are oars. Make sure you have your oars in case both outboard and trolling motor fail to start. Also good to use when you want to push yourself away from the dock or rocks even. If you're inflating your boat and setting it up uh, from the parking lot, you will need a set of wheels to transport to the launch ramp and will also need when you're bringing back to your car as well. The next item on my list is the toilet and I don't think I need to explain further. And of course, you will need a room for all your fishing tackles and gears. Uh, preferably near your seat so they are easily accessible. If you're bringing a crab net, make sure you put your Go ID, which is the uh, fishing license number, on the crab net buoy. This is to show that you're crabbing legally. Here's an example of how to write your Go ID on your buoy. I'll write it front and back so when your buoy flips over, the number is still visible. Always bring a hat and sunscreen to protect your skin when you're out fishing. And make sure to bring a life jacket or life vest for your safety. And the last items on my list, and please don't judge me, are the fishing rods. I've actually forgot to bring fishing rods once on a fishing trip, so they're always on my list now. All right, that's everything on my list. Uh, let's try to load it up on the boat and see how long it takes. <laughs>